Judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano, who joins us now from New York. Judge, it's always good to see you. Thanks for joining us, sir. Sure, Trace. It's, it's interesting because TTG brought up a couple of good points. One, we don't know the motive. Right. But if this person did have an accomplice, Judge, and this does turn out, and again, we're not, we're not saying this because the D.C. police are not saying this, nor is anyone else. If there turns out to be a link to terrorism, it really changes everything from a legal standpoint. Oh, it would change it radically, Shep. Look, law enforcement first gathers information and then sort of makes a spectrum. What is the worst case scenario? What is the least case scenario? There's no happy scenario here because 12 mm -hmm. people are dead. The worst case scenario is this was an assault on the United States military, an act of terrorism, which is defined under the federal law as two or more acts of violence intended to affect the policies of the government. That's the worst case scenario. And typically an act of terrorism would require two or more people. It appears as though they're looking for another person. We don't know if that other person was involved or if, again, it was sort of a case of mistaken identity because two hours ago they were looking for two other people and then they dropped one of them. The least case scenario, again, still horrific and horrendous because 12 innocent people are dead and a lot more are injured. The least case scenario is uh, a workplace violence of a deranged individual right. who didn't know what he was doing, whose goal was not to harm, whose goal was not to change the policy of the government, but who just decided to get violent and kill people. And it's going to depend on the forensic information that they gather and anybody that they can speak to to describe an individual's um, behavior. Either case, Trace, because this is yeah. property of the federal government, it carries the death penalty. Right. But you, you say, Judge, that it's an easy, de easy definition for terrorism. You know, not so easy for some. Back in Fort Hood, we knew that was terrorism, and it took a very long time to figure that out. This, we're talking about 12 dead now. Right. I mean, this could, this could match Fort Hood. We don't know what the death toll at it, the end is going to be. We hope it stays at 12, it, awful it, as that is. It is but, still... But good it, Lord, it changes everything, Judge. Yes, it is still a head-scratcher as to why the government has not characterized Fort Hood as an act of terrorism that would open up floodgates of financial relief to the families of the victims. But the government sometimes moves in strange ways, and a different administration might have characterized it uh, differently. And again, it's going to depend on the facts. Was the shooter or were the shooters attempting to influence the policies of the government by the people they chose to kill, or was this the random act of a deranged madman or madmen who, who was or were just killing people that happened to be near him or them? We, we won't know the answer to that yet. We have to take the government at its uh, face value when it says there still is a dangerous individual out there for whom they are still uh, looking. Look, it's hard to believe somebody could get on the naval yard, in the naval yard with a weapon. 